next year, ladies and the gentlemen, set to make her ring walk, faisant son entrée vers le ring, elle est invaincue, elle a un jab d'enfer et une vraie passion pour la boxe féminine. She is undefeated, she has a tremendous jab and the true passion for women's boxing. Veuillez accueillir la terreur rimousquoise. Let's welcome the terror of Rimouski, Marie I'm with Mia today. Hi, thank Hi. you for joining me. No problem. No problem. You, Mia, uh, Mia Ellis, you're now 7-1 with six knockout. Yeah. Last week, you, you know, we saw those videos, uh, you know, on the net about this beautiful second round TKO against mm -hmm. Jessica Emmerich, and everyone was impressed. But this is business for you. This is not your first knockout, and that's your style of boxing as well. Who are you, Mia? Can you talk to me a little bit about who you are? What's your style of boxing? You know, why do you box? Things like that. I want to know you better. Uh, up and coming female prospect. Uh, right now, I'm just striving to become world champion. Of course, I'm still at the beginning stages, so I'm still building, still learning. Uh, but, but you're young. You're 23, right? Yeah, yeah I'm young. You have time to learn. You have time I, to become I, better and to target people and to reach yep. your goals. Yep, I still have a lot of time. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm humble, so I'm, I don't really talk too crazy. But like you said, the knockouts. Uh, I'm used to the. I'm used to getting those knockouts. You have uh, power. You have you have yeah. power in those in, in those gloves, you know. Yeah, I definitely got power. But my style of boxing, I can adjust to my opponent. Like if I got a box, I can box, move around. If I got a brawl, I can brawl. As you can see, she tried to brawl with me. So I, you know, came back to show who, who really the brawler. Do you do you prefer to brawl or to box? If you if you have to choose, or you like both, depending. I like both, equally. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's, it it depends on the opponent what they want to do, whatever they want to do, we can do it. You know, so that's just that's my style of boxing. You have been into boxing forever, it seems. Yeah. You're young, but you started yeah. young. Your dad is a coach. Obviously, yeah. we saw him with Gervonta, right? Yeah. Um, you are from Baltimore as well, like Gervonta, but you started young. Was it an obvious choice for you to start to start boxing? Or, you know, maybe dad had an influence on it as well. How did you decide? I, I really like the sport. I want to do it. Because I guess you started like playing and mimicking a little bit boxers, you know, as a kind of game. Yeah. But when did you decide it was a serious thing for you? Um, I can't even tell you that because hmm. I was I've been around the sport my whole life, and my dad he actually didn't plan for me to take it serious. He just I was just around there and wanted to go to the gym with him every day, and one day he decided me he he decided to put me in a ring just to see how I would react. Just to try, to just to try. Yeah. Just to see how I will react to getting hit. Because, you know, once you get hit, it's a different ball game. Some people might not want to do it no more. Some people might want more. Mm -hmm. And he put me in the ring. Next day, I was like, I'm ready to go back. <laughs> and people stopped like, 
you were not afraid at all that right. you knew already you liked it you know like um this might be what she really wanted to do but he never forced it on me it was just always something i wanted to do mm -hmm. so it was like kind of something normal for you to try it then you liked it and he decided that okay i will train her then i yes. will train her because if she likes it she will she will learn properly yeah in a way and so so you started very young yeah. um you started as an amateur and uh how many fights do you have as an amateur i only have like i think 24 fights yeah. i was okay. i was 20 and 4 so I didn't have a big amateur background, so. Just what's necessary to start you. Yeah. And then you turned pro very young. Yes. Um, and you started, you know, of course, you're, as I said, you're seven and one. You have six knockouts so far. But as you said, you like to box too. You can do way more than knockouts. Yeah. Um, this year... I mean, this year, in the next 12 months, let's say in the next 12 months, what are the goals for you? Because now, okay, you're seven and one, of course, a lot of knockouts. What I do believe, maybe you need exposure, you need better opponents as well to start to level up a little bit, you know, and, you know, climb the rankings. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're fighting as a super featherweight right now, but you could fight as a lightweight. I think you're tall. Quite, you're quite tall. You could fight two or three categories uh, if need be, right? Yeah. Who do you target the most right now? What, what, what's, what would you, in 12 months, where would you like to be? That's mainly it. Uh, right now, I'm thinking about going down to 126 because... Oh, really? Yeah, because I make 130 so easy. Like, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, you know, as you as you know, I just won a small title. Yes, so that puts me in the rankings. Exactly. So I'm gonna defend that, and then after I defend that, I'm gonna uh, hopefully fight for a bigger belt, which is already in the talks because the WBA administrator they they came to my fight, and they saw what you were able to do. Yeah, and they came and talked to me. They came to talk to me before and after the fight. So that's in the works already. So I'll be fighting for a bigger belt within the next year. Yeah, because people will see, well, check box rank, you know, and they right. will see the ranking, but it's not, it doesn't correspond to your talent at all because you're starting, you're young. You know, sometimes you have the opponents you can find. And, you know, do you have a promoter right now or not at all? Yes, uh, Javon C. Davis. Oh yeah, that's Gervonta. Direct. You've been on many Gervontas under cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is what kind of relationship do you have with him? Because you know him. He he told he told he said quite often that he considers you as the little sis, the little sister. But you've been training with him forever as well. He yeah. has been uh, very present in your life. Mm, yeah, that's my brother. Uh, like this, so. Not a lot of women have the, the opportunity to have that kind of exposure, like having someone bringing you on the undercard of big fights and things right. like that. This is very good exposure for you. It, yeah. It's a big gift from him to bring you, but he believes in you. Yeah, he definitely believes in me. Uh, my first pro fight was on the Javante Davis versus Gamble undercard. So yeah. ever since then, I've been basically on every undercard. He tries, he tries most of the time to add you, right? Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work because it's complicated sometimes to match people up, you know, yeah. it doesn't work. But yeah. usually he brings you with him. Yeah. Uh, five out of all eight of my fights was on his undercard. So so for you, it's not a big deal. Big events, a big people, big crowd, a big pressure is not a big deal. It's not, it's not a challenge for me at all. <laughs> What did you learn from him? And what do you think he learned from you? Because we both train, you're, you're both young uh, together. You have the same coach. Well, Jeff and Dad, many good, but your dad is there. Um, what do you think, what you learned from him? What have you learned from him so far? And what do you think is learned from you? Um, I learned from him that it's possible to yes. 
make it from the environment that we from because we from Baltimore it's rough here it's so rough he, he showed me that it can happen you know it's possible to get away from it it's possible to make it out no matter and, what background you have yeah. it's possible to go ahead and push and follow your dreams and reach yeah. goals and you know succeed mm -hmm. just stay focused and keep going and from me he probably learned that the ones behind him is always watching so he got to stay focused he know mm -hmm. i'm always watching him yes you're he there you're yeah. watching and probably if he needs advice or he, he needs a real opinion clear opinion you will be always there yeah, for him we always talking i'm always telling him you know stuff that's going on so he definitely learned from me that he got to stay focused because he don't want us to make the mistakes that he made. So mm -hmm. he got to stay on the right track and make sure he doing everything the right way. That's important what, what you're telling me right now. He doesn't want you to follow his path. He mm -hmm. wants you to train, to be focused, and he wants to help you, to guide you, but in the correct way. In the, yeah. in the certain, That's what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting uh, relationship. Um, is it true that you knocked him down a <laughs> times, or is it legend, urban legend? No, it's true. It's true. Uh, he was getting ready for his first Golden Gloves tournament. He was ten, and I think I was like five. <laughs> yeah, and I caught him. I caught him with a lucky punch, and it knocked him down. They Doesn't matter. Him. It counts. It, it counts. It counts. Yeah, it counts. <laughs> so when people they talk about you, you can always say, oh, I knocked you down and I knocked you down once. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Always left about that. And I was five and a girl, you know. Uh -huh. so that, that that's good. That's it. You know, I, I've heard that it happened, but I was not sure. So I said I will ask. Yeah. Um tell me, last year you got a first, you know, your first loss. Mm -hmm. Losing is not a problem when you're young if you use it to grow and to, right. to learn things. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from this? What did you learn about yourself? And what did you change in your boxing in order to, you know, go ahead and continue having success? Uh, I learned that um, if my mental is not right before a fight, I shouldn't fight because I was going through something. But for that fight, so I was going through something with my family. I had a loss in my family, and I wasn't mentally ready. So now I know that men um, men your mental is important. So if, yes. it's, if it's if it's not right, just don't fight. Um, no matter what the situation may be or the consequences, you shouldn't get in the ring if your mental not right because it can turn out bad. But luckily for me. I just got the loss. It wasn't nothing too crazy, but um. But you could there, identify that it was your mindset. You were not mentally there, psychologically there, and you nothing. already knew that mm -hmm. you needed to improve this in in order to to be in the ring next yep. time. Mm -hmm. And it's important what you're telling me because you know sometimes we hear about injuries. Right? Mm -hmm. She's not fighting. Is not fighting because of an injury and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Do you think we would accept this that much if someone would say, I'm I'm not fighting, I'm not mentally ready? I think we still have, uh, um, not prejudice, but people are not that ready to accept that kind of reasons. But these reasons are so important because you're risking your life in a ring each yep. time you're in a ring. Yep, you yeah. always want to have those uh, trolls and that's just want to think what they want to think and... They, cause they, they, it be, and then it be the ones that never stepped a foot in the ring before, so they don't even know how I feel. They don't know to be in these situations. So, but you they always want to, they want to be entertained, but they don't understand yeah. it's also a risk, a life. Yeah. Uh, you, you can lose your life. You can kill someone in a ring. Exactly. Uh, yeah. so that's yeah. that's so that's important to be all there, fully mm -hmm. there, physically and mentally and psychologically there. Right. Um, so you learned that it was important for you to be, you know, to take care of this, uh, my, of your mental health, of your psychological preparation mm -hmm. and ensure that you're fully ready to go back in the ring. Okay. Uh, from then you have had success, a lot of success. Um, 
tell me um, a little bit about the people you admire a little in the sport, in the game. Could be male, female, both. Who inspires you right now these days, as an example, when you watch boxing? Because I think you've watched a lot of boxing in your life. Yeah. You follow boxing a lot. You're surrounded by people, you know, coaches and so on who are very focused on what's happening in the game. Who inspires you right now these days? Female, I would say Clarissa Shields. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she opened the doors for us. You know, she the one stepping up telling them how we feel. She not thinking about just herself. She thinking about all the female boxers. True. Um, she talk about, we like, we don't get treated the same as the males. We work just as hard. So why can't we get the same treatment that they get, you know? Yeah. We risking our life the same way that they risking their life. Um, we yeah, getting paid. Yeah. We, we starting to get paid more. I would say it's because of her too. So you yes, know yes. girls like Clarissa, they open doors. Many yeah. are working hard right now for the young ones like you. Yeah. So you get better conditions. Mm -hmm. Um Clarissa is also so talented. Let's be yeah. honest. She is she calls herself the gold, but she is very good in yeah. mainly everything. Mm -hmm. Um do you think she would have knockouts if she had three minute rounds? I think so. If because she she's almost there. Each yeah. time she's almost there. She finishes very strong, but like mm -hmm. she misses maybe 15 seconds. Yeah. If we had if she had that extra minute in her rounds, I definitely think she would have more knockouts. Mm -hmm. So that, that extra minute would definitely make a difference for her. Would you like to have three minute rounds or for you, it's not that important because you succeed in having knockouts in two minute <laughs> rounds, but yeah. like you train three minutes, probably like yeah. most people. Yeah, I do. Um, I would love to have three minute rounds because the, the fight I just had, if I had an extra minute in that first round, I would have, I definitely would have stopped in the first round. Yeah. Yeah, and you uh, can also discriminate a little bit more the good boxers from the less good boxers with three minutes because two minutes you have a you know if you have a good stamina and you're careful you can survive sometimes but some excellent boxers will will finish the work or will drain the opponent you know from all the energy with the third minute. Yeah. So that's also this, this discriminating a little bit who is really good and who's not that good. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes a difference with the recuperation time in the corner. Yeah. Um, you like Clarissa, girls like her in your own category. Would you have a dream fight? I mean, your own category you, from 126 to 135. Let's say that. Do you have a dream fight that's someone that you would love to fight someday? Yeah, I always say I would love to fight uh, Katie Taylor before she lead the game. I would love to fight Katie Taylor. Do you think you will have time? We never know. It can go fast. I think, yeah. I think it can happen. It can go fast with a with couple of good matchups in the next year. Yeah. Maybe you can climb fast. For sure. I think I think it can happen. Yes. Why do why why Taylor? Tell me. Tell me more. Um, she's been in the game for a while. She's still like one of the best to me. Um, that fight she had with Serrano, that was crazy. I like that. Were you there or you were watching on TV? No, I, I actually was in camp. If I wasn't in camp, oh. I was going to go. But I, I was a lucky one. I was there. I it was for me goosebumps from the beginning till the end of this event. Yeah, that was crazy. I was in Florida on training camp. So I wasn't able to go, but yeah, I watched it though. That fight was. You were probably, impressed. Yeah, that was one of the best female fights I ever seen. Did you have a, a, a Serrano or Taylor winning? Winning? I think Serrano might have won it just by a little bit. I think the same. Yeah. I had 96, 94, something like yeah. that for Serrano, but it was very close. Yeah, that so was I will not say, oh, the, 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 the uh, yeah. you know, it's not a correct result. But like, I, I had Serrano, but many had Taylor too. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell the truth. I think Serrano might have pulled it off by a few. Mm -hmm. um, 
Alicia Baumgartner, would you like to fight her? I love uh, Alicia. I think that fight probably will happen to you, like in the future. I spoke with her. She came down to my gym and worked with me before. Um, but I think, like in the fall future, that probably will happen. Like with, we won't have a choice but to fight each other. You, you know? have, you both have time. You both yeah, have time, time to face each other, no matter what category it will be. Eh? Yeah. You have time. You have yeah. time. Uh, that would be, I think that would be a good matchup. Your style and mm -hmm. her style would fit for a good show. And yeah. that's why I'm asking. Um, mm. Tell me uh, a little bit about how complicated is this lifestyle of being a boxer, a professional boxer? Because, you know, many girls... 23, 23 year old girls, they're thinking of getting married, of having children. Oh, they are starting, they are going to college, university, or they, they, you know, they go out with friends every night, every week. That's mm -hmm. the lifestyle they have. They enjoy life. You're not, you don't have that lifestyle at all. Uh, what kind of sacrifices are with the choice come they come with the choice of being a professional boxer at 23 years old uh sacrifice i've been sacrificing i've 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 been dealing with different sacrifices since i was little but right now my hardest one is when i go away to camp and i'm not around my family for like two oh. three months yeah that's a long time to be away from my family when i'm used to being with them every day true So that's that's my hardest sacrifice. Um, and when I don't have a fight coming up, I do go out and hang out with my friends. You, you have to enjoy life a bit, right? Yes, exactly. I, I, what, what do you do when you, when you have a free day, as an example, or you, you have time, free time, vacations, let, let's say. What, what do you enjoy the most to do? I'm pretty sure you're not watching Netflix all day long. You're uh, going out, as you said. You're eating probably things you don't eat during camp. Uh, exactly. What do you like? To, what, what what do you like? What what do you do when you have time and you have? It's like open bar of doing anything you want. Yeah, we uh, when I'm with my friends, I go out. We go eat, joke and play, and we be out just late, out late. You know, just having fun, spending time with each other because they know once I lock in for a fight, they won't see me for a couple months. So we be just trying to get out fun and it just it, it's mainly just uh laughs and fun. Nothing you have a normal life aside yeah. of this, but when you're focused, you're focused on camp. Yeah, yep. I don't see him at all. Like yeah. once I'm yeah, once I'm locked in for a fight. No I distraction, no distraction yeah. at all. Exactly. Yeah, and so, well, it's 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 not everyone who could un understand this. You need to be surrounded by people no, who respect your lifestyle. Definitely, and and I say that all the time. I got friends that 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 understand it and they respect it, so they don't take it hard. They don't be like, "Oh, she thinks she all that. She don't want to be with us no more." My friends not like that. They understand what I'm going through and what I got to do, and they know once it's all said and done, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> they know they know uh, you will you will become uh, uh, Mia and won't be the killer bee anymore yeah, when time exactly. it's time to be Mia, right? Yeah. yeah. Why do you why did why do you choose did you choose killer bee as a nickname? Uh my personality. Me and my uh siblings, we all bees, but my older sister, she honey bee, my second oh. sister, she queen bee, and I was the main one. So my dad gave me a uh, killer bee. So you're all bees. That's, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was the story behind this. Because yeah. I, I was like, oh, she has a style. And she's a kind of predator. You know, yeah. she's going ahead. You know, she's she's going, uh, she's targeting the opponent. And and then suddenly she's the killer in the ring. I thought that was that That's was true. coming <laughs> from that. But it's not it at all the same. It fits just wrong. right. It fits just right. <laughs> I'm totally wrong. Okay. <laughs> In boxing, what are the ma main keys of, to success? Uh, if you have a couple of advices to give to some people starting, if they want to have success in boxing, what do they need to remember? For me right now is uh, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now I got a um, strong relationship with God. You know, I feel like 
if I didn't, I wouldn't be where I be right now. Um, yeah, that's first. You gotta have a, a strong relationship with God and believe. Second, you gotta stay focused. Discipline. Mm. Discipline. That's all for me. People, they don't understand this sometimes. They say, I'm very motivated. Yeah, but motivation is not discipline. I can yeah. be very motivated to start training tomorrow, but I will not do it. Being exactly. That's okay. exactly. <laughs> yeah. They don't understand the difference between both. But you in boxing, you do understand the difference. And the boxers who don't, they don't succeed. They don't, right. just, they don't exactly. succeed. <laughs> um. In the, okay, I will just ask random questions like this so people they will they may, they may know you better. You said it was easy to make weight uh, last time. Uh, yeah. How many pounds do you cut usually for your category, your actual category, and how could you mainly cut? You, you know, you think that it would be healthy to cut. You say maybe I'm going down to one twenty six. Do you cut the 12 pound, pounds, 20, uh, <laughs> five cut, pounds? I cut between 12 and 15. Okay. Yeah. On the what period? When do you start cutting? At the beginning of the camp? Or do you start one month and a half before? Or what's usually the best for you? I start cutting two to three weeks before the fight. Okay. So as fast as this, it's working for you. So that's why you, you're telling me. I could make 126 mm -hmm. easy because I don't need a lot of time to cut weight. Right. And every time I weigh in for the fight, I'm always like 127, 128. Mm. So I'm like, I might as well go down to one. Very close. You yeah. just need to cut two more, yep. two more pounds. Mm -hmm. um, if you could change one rule in women's boxing, what would it be and why? Would it be the three minute rounds? Would you like 12 rounds of championship? Uh, what 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 would you change if you were the only decider? That's what it would be. It would be uh, give us three minute rounds, or if they don't want to give us the three minute rounds for championship fights, give us 12 two minute rounds. Yeah, and some people they think it would be a good transition, a good if no one is open minded to give the three minute rounds, maybe. Mm -hmm giving 12 two minute rounds for the big for now at least yeah. and mm -hmm. then later we go with three minute rounds yeah yeah could, could be an option um do you dedicate yourself full time to boxing right now or because many boxers you know they can't female mainly they can't do it they need a day job or an only fans or things <laughs> like that <laughs> You know, they don't, they don't live with pure boxing only. So do you dedicate yourself to full-time to boxing? You're young. Maybe you can do it. Some can't. Yeah, I'm full-time boxing. So you don't need an OnlyFans for now? No, I don't need nothing else right now. I'm full-time <laughs> boxer, just gym at home every day. How many hours in the gym per day usually? I get there at 10 in the morning and I leave like eight or nine at night. So oh, it's, a, it's a full, it's a full time job being so a boxer. I'm there, I'm there almost 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. How yeah. many times you spar per week? At least twice. No, twice. less than twice a week. Yeah. Do you spar with girls or most of the time you have male uh, partners? I spar with both male and female. You spar with Javante? Yeah, but he yeah. be working with me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can't. He, he, he ain't gonna hurt me. He not gonna hurt me. But it could it could happen. Yeah. What what could happen? <laughs> I mean, you have trained with him often. You have sparred oh, yeah. with him often. Yeah, we always work. Yeah, we always work. He was in training camp with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's who is the most underrated boxer in female boxing, in your opinion? The most underrated, uh huh. A boxer that we know she is good, 
but we don't talk about her that much right now. Doesn't have the she doesn't have the exposure or the good matchups to showcase the talent. It's a complicated one, this one. Yeah. I'm uh, thinking at the same time. What would I choose? Shadesha. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shadesha is difficult is difficult to match. Yeah. So, of course, it's not... Uh, yeah, you're right. And people, they expect her to knock the opponent out all the time. Mm -hmm. Which is not the correct expectation in boxing because knockout shouldn't be the finality. should mm -hmm. be a tool. <laughs> if, yeah. you can, if you can knock someone out, go ahead. But if you think... Uh, to, if you think about the knockout all the time, you may lose. You may yeah. you may you may lose. And when you okay, so people maybe they don't understand that much how it is, but it's very energy consuming to try to knock someone out and not succeeding it during a fight, right? We see sometimes some boxers trying and trying and trying and half. At, 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 at they, they reach the fifth or the sixth round and they don't have any energy anymore. Yeah. So you have, you have to be clever. And that's why you say you're a brawler, but you're also a boxer, I guess. Mm -hmm. You choose your, you, you probably choose your, 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 your options and you yeah, know, your moments. Yeah. I tell them all the time, like, I don't, I never go into a fight looking for the knockout. It's just that when I see it, I take it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. I never, I'm never trying to knock somebody out. You know, I'm being cautious, taking my time. But once I see that you hurt, I'm jumping on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yeah, that's the, and I understand why, you know, I understand why, because that's the best way of learning as well. If you want to knock out all your opponents and you have this mindset, maybe you will lose other opportunities to improve. Yeah. other skills you have that you should practice as well you know mm -hmm. uh, when you build your game plan with your coach who is your dad um is it i mean in general is it easy to distinguish the dad from the coach uh or for you it's the same person full time you always see coach and dad uh, when you see you see him it's the same person I see dad. I That's never see dad. Coach. Okay. Yeah, I, I never see coach. Of course he's gonna uh of course he's gonna be my coach in the gym and make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do and in the fight, but I always see dad. That's just like if you noticed after the fight, he jumped up in the ring and gave me a hug. Like mm -hmm. that's always gonna be my dad. <laughs> That's that. So you don't for you, your dad is a coach. That's and you don't have okay like, two it, your dad is not dad at home and the coach at in the right. gym. It's nope. dad and coach at the same time, depending yep. what you're doing. Yes. Some people they they, they 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 distinguish really, really, you know, in the gym, you I'm you're not your dad, I'm your coach. Uh, you don't he never had this kind of speech with you in the gym. Uh, you're the daughter, is the dad. Yeah, that's how it always is. And that's okay. I mean, there's not the, it, it's fine. It it depends on what kind of relationship you have with him as well yeah. and how the trust is. And, you know, yeah. you know, he will protect you as well yeah. uh, in the corner. Do you think being, uh, uh, do you think um, dads who are coaches, they risk to stop a fight or let a fight go? um at um you know at the wrong moment let's say that or because some people they say they criticize a lot maybe like Teofimo Lopez dad or some other coaches oh shouldn't be like this in the corner shouldn't be like that he is acting like a dad not like a coach too emotional and blah 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 we hear it about other dads as well mm -hmm. um, I guess with your dad how is the relationship in the corner? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? The vibe is different if you compare with like when he is at home or in the gym. Um, the vibe is definitely different in a, in a fight. Uh, cause he know he he knows me best. 
Yes. So it's like he see the mistakes that I'm making or he see what I'm doing good and that's what he want me to keep doing. So the vibe is just different. Like, but he is not overprotective or right. too uh, too yeah. aggressive. Like nope. he he know he know the right decisions to make when I'm in the fight. Um, and it's crazy. I just was telling my mother like when I'm in the fight, that's kind of like the only voice I hear. I don't hear the crowd nothing. I just hear my I can hear my dad's voice clear. But this is good. This is how yeah. it should be. Uh, yeah. Some people they get distracted about mm -hmm. what's happening around, and they should yeah. recognize the voice of the coach or the corner in general, between all in the middle of all the voices and the noises. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have this vibe already, this relationship with him. You recognize his voice. You hear him only him. You're in a yeah. bubble with him in a yeah, way. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's like I I really don't hear nothing else in the fight. I just hear I can hear his voice like he right on my shoulder. It's crazy. And when you hear, the, and when you, and, and after the last bell or after a knockout, suddenly you hear everything. Yeah, yeah. After the knockout, I hear everything. As soon as it's finished for a second, poof, the yep. bubble explodes. Yeah. And then you can celebrate and, and uh, kiss your crowd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how and it be is. the star you are because you're humble, but I do consider you as a star awaiting for the glory because you yeah. don't have the glory yet. No, you're still learning, you're having your fights, you're doing your things, mm -hmm. but you have the star, you know, vibe in you. You yeah. are the boxing, you know, the attitude in the ring, the space uh, you take in the ring. This is, you know, only a uh, boxing stars do it that way yeah. and probably you learned it from very young probably you learned it because you were as also with Gervonta and other good boxers you know yeah. who they own also that kind of spirit in the ring yeah so yeah so that's uh, even if you're humble that's the way I see you And that's the way many will see you soon as well. So what's the, what's the plan for this year? Do you want if on the tech, would you like to have four to fight four times, five times, three times? What's the best for you? The best case scenario for you in term of amounts of fight per year? Yeah, um, I try to fight five times a year. So this was my second fight this year. As you you probably know, I was supposed to fight on the Davis versus Gus. It was canceled, right? Because yeah, of the I opponent. Yep. Yeah. So I fought twice this year. I'm trying to fight two more times before the year's out. Okay. So, so it will be a very busy uh, end of yeah. year. So if Javante have another fight before the year's out, I'll I'll be on that card, and then I'll probably have another another fight. If okay, so at least one or once or twice. Yeah. And if he is not fighting, you have uh, you can fight at home. You were at home in Baltimore yeah. last time. It was cool. You were the star of the show, yeah. <laughs> and and it was like you were in the, you were you were the main event, right? If I'm not wrong, co main, uh, co yeah, co main. But you're already like one of the stars of the of of the of the boxing card at home. What's the vibe when you fight? Do you have because you're friends they go they can't they, they attend your family everyone's around yeah. should be different yeah it was exciting um i definitely love the support that definitely played a big part in it too is it But, more pressure for you or to be at home fighting it was it was in training yeah it was more pressure because it was like i gotta train hard to show out i'm at home everybody coming so i'm training hard to make sure i the night go is planned And I did it. Yeah, you did it. It was great. And the knockout was, the, the TKO was beautiful. It, it was not like streamed, but like uh, we got uh, the, we had the chains. A lot of people, they shared, uh, yeah. they shared it and it was beautiful. Very, yeah. very, very beautiful for a home TKO. So yeah. the crowd was probably very pleased by that. It was like, a, it was very nice. So you say maybe five times. At 23, you can five, you can fight five, four, five times per year. It's not a problem because you are very focused, you're in excellent shape, and you want to climb the, the, the rankings. There, you want to be rated. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to have opportunities. So I will, I will wish you. I'm wishing you the best for what's remained for this year. I wish you a minor title again. 
Uh, if it's WBA, good. If it's not WBA, I wish you uh, to have your opportunity. And I'm pretty sure we will see you very soon in the top 10 of the category you. you choose, no yeah. matter which one you choose. And uh, so thank you so much for, uh, for coming to my podcast and see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.